going to be using the sunflower spray and the birthday greetings embossing folders um, the birthday greetings I wanted to use because I think it's it's one of those um, that sort of probably got forgotten a little bit um, uh, you know a lot of the floral ones are they've got a lot of interest to them and you can do so much with them but I just wanted to show you that you can do so much with this one too um, I think it's I think it's a little unsung hero personally because not only can you use it as is you can also use it for just specific words so I'm going to sort of do a little bit of both today to show you that you know you, you can do both so I'm colouring the sunflowers but obviously there's no stencil with these sunflowers I'm not sure if the sunflower is included in the stencils that Lisa is actually bringing out to match earlier embossing folders I can't remember whether this was one of them but just in case it isn't um, I'm going to show you how to colour it and I'm colouring it using the embossing folder so I'm not actually colouring the card I'm putting colour on the embossing folder which will transfer to the card so if you're not particularly brave with colouring this is a way around it okay so we're using those two and of course the bubble squares just to sort of set my card up um, so this is where we're headed my sunflowers today are going to look a little bit different to these because after I'd finished it as is you know my usual thing I looked at it and thought mm, could have done those a little bit differently could have done those a little bit better but you know that's why you do want to sort of look at and then want to perfect all the things you sort of left off the first one so that's where we're headed so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to color the sunflowers okay so here's my folder and we're coloring on the debossed side so find the deboss part of your folder because obviously when you put your flower that you've already um, die cut and I've already embossed this um, because I wanted I was going to colour them with Copics and then I thought there must be a quicker way to add colour for those people that, that sort of don't use pencils or, or markers or whatever so that's why it's already cut and embossed if you just want to cut it out add the colour and then emboss it you can do it all in one go doesn't really matter so when you're putting your colour on here, what you have to remember is the emboss side is going to push your card into the deboss side. Okay, so your card is going to be face down. So that's why you want the colour on the deboss side. All right. Now I'm using four colours here. I used orange on the original. I'm not using any orange as an ink on this one. All right. So you'll probably be able to see better where I place the colour, okay? And I'm using Lisa's stencil brushes for this because they're small enough to get into all the all the detail. So first colour I'm going to go in with is my mustard seed, and I'm I am dabbing as opposed to brushing. Doesn't really matter. You can do both. Don't worry about going over the edge because, as I've said. When you put your um, die cut flower in, it's only going to sit on the places where the actual deboss is. Okay, so don't worry. And you can always go in and add more colour, so you can you can put it back in and redo it if you're not happy with the amount of colour. However, I think I only did one set of colour on this one. Um, so I only went in once with the with the actual ink pads and added the colour. Um, and I, I actually think it was enough because I'm just going to add some detail afterwards with a couple of Copic markers. Not a great deal. Um, just to sort of highlight some of the veins on the leaves, really, on the petals of the sunflowers, really. So this is really quick and this will wash off. It's not going to spoil your embossing folder at all. All you're going to do is just rinse it under the tap and all that colour will come off all over your nice clean sink in the 
in the kitchen or the bathroom or wherever you craft but it'll come off as well so don't worry about it okay so that's my mustard seed then i'm going to do the leaves i'm using a little bit of um crushed olive all over and then i'm actually going to go in and add some mowed lawn just around the edges just to give it a little bit of definition around the edges of the leaves okay so it's it's not one of those accurate colorings you haven't got to sort of stop in the lines or worry about where you are with your ink it's not not going to be a problem now i'm just going to add some down here on the stems you can see how random i'm being i'm not not taking any particular care to be fair okay so that's my crushed olive which i do particularly like and then my mowed lawn is just going to go around the edge only because it'll just add a little bit of different colour okay it's not it's not an exact science you don't have to add the extra green if you don't want to but it's just to give it a little bit more interest and then on the original one I used walnut stain as the brown and after I'd done it I looked at it and I thought it's definitely not um, the right brown it's not dark enough hi Tina um, hi Gloria no problem always catch up with anything you've missed by going back or waiting for the edited version on youtube not a problem we'll be in the group afterwards as well anyway so so you can see how quick this is and i'm not as i've said i'm not being at all precise with this I still don't think this brown is going to be dark enough um, so if you wanted to you could go in with some black and mix it in I'm not going to do that today but you could do if you felt like the brown wasn't wasn't quite dark enough um, just to sort of add a little bit more depth to the middle and I'm just going to add a tiny bit along here to this little bit of binding that's around the, the bundle Okay, so that's all my colouring done, other than my bits that I'm going to do with my markers. Now, when you're putting this down, I would put your die cut on top of your embossed side of your folder. You will feel it sort of sit into place, and then you'll know that it's going to be in the right place. If you turn it over, that's sitting beautifully inside all those lines. Okay, so you know that when you flip the colour bit over, it's going to hit in the right place okay so just keep your finger on it and close it down from the middle and then run it through your embossing machine so just put my little bits to one side don't forget to use the correct combination of plates for your particular machine sorry if that moved the camera but i wanted to do this so that you could see the you know the immediate effect okay so then i'm just gonna peel this off here and then you're left with your color on your embossing now you could leave it at that if you wanted to you could put it back in you could go back in and add more color um what time is it we might do that actually just to show you how easy it is really to just go in and add that bit more colour so where it's sort of where it's missed the colour this is because of the, the deepness of the embossing on the folder um, you, you're bound to get places where it doesn't pick up the colour because this as I've said it's not an exact science okay so I've added a bit more mustard seed and i am going to go in and add a little bit more brown because as i said to you it's it's not picked up all of the brown i don't mind particularly but while i've got the 
the embossing folder out and the inks here then we might as well just go in and see if we can add a little bit more depth but if you wanted to leave it like this you absolutely could um because you know it's sort of a, a vintage effect isn't it it's not um it's not a specific solid colouring um as I would describe it. So we'll add a little bit more brown and then we'll just go in where it's missed that crushed olive in the middle of those leaves and just add a little bit more in there and then run it through again. So I'm going to put it on the embossed side of my folder so that it sits into place. Just check by turning it over that it's in the right place, which it is. Hold it down, flip it over and run it through your machine. So just bear with while I run it through here. <clears throat> and then peel it back. Now I'm happier with that because it's taken a lot more colour. But if you wanted to emphasise some of the veins a little bit more and you wanted to add a little bit of colour, you could perhaps go with a lighter one to start with in case it's not quite right. But you can always go in with a marker and just add a little bit of colour to give your petals a little bit of depth. So where the embossing hasn't actually caught the ink, you can go in and just add some fine lines with a marker or pencils doesn't really matter you can use whatever your you know chosen medium is to be honest um, they'll all work equally as well and just go in and add some details i'm not going to add it all because it's going to take me quite a while but you can see that just by adding that little bit of color there that this one looks quite a lot different to these down here and you could go in and add some more colour on the brown as well if you wanted to. You could go in with a little bit of a darker orange there. These are Copics, Catherine. Um, and this is um, a yellow-red colour, 24, number 24, and it's called Pale Sepia. Um, I would probably go a shade darker and use Tuscan Orange so that I, I'm going to go over these and add the Tuscan Orange instead. Um, just to just give those petals a little bit more depth but you can see how easily that's colored and just by adding one pen or one pencil you can change it up again so let's add it to our card and we'll show you how i've used the happy birthday embossing folder so my base card is a seven by seven and i've cut out um the largest stitched bubble square the one that sits inside the largest bubble okay i've already added my 3d pads so i'll just pop that down there and then we're going to add our embossed piece now i've cut this out with the next stitched square down from this one and then popped it inside my embossing folder now the gap at the top between the word and the stitching is a little bit less at the top than it is at the bottom personally i don't think you can i don't think it stands out enough to worry about it so it, it sort of it sits in here nicely but there's a little bit of an overhang at the bottom okay i don't think that makes any difference so you know it, it's entirely up to you you can put a piece of card through and then cut it out or not it's entirely up to you um, and again i've added 3d pads to this i'm not putting that down just yet because what i wanted to do was add just a little piece of vellum to this side here and this is just vellum that i've had in my stash um, and i've just ripped it freehand i haven't used a ruler i did use a ruler on this one but it was just a little bit too uniform for me and i didn't like it so i've decided to go with hand ripping on this one okay so i'm just going to use my um little fabulous tape gun if it will work 
yes it will just to secure the vellum at the back okay like so and then I can add my pads on top of there okay so I knew I hadn't done them all but I wanted to add this down first okay so I'll just go ahead and finish adding my pads behind here so I put my vellum on and it just sort of hides a little couple little parts of the two words that I'm going to use all right so I'll pop that down on there and then what I what I did next was I took a piece of card and because I wanted happy birthday I just put a piece of card into the folder and ran it through I mean I've trimmed this obviously but my piece of card was sort of um, just at the bottom like that so a piece of card that runs the width and then run it through my machine and all I've done is trimmed it down so that it sits on top of the, the words that were on the original folder okay and I've 3d these you don't have to if you don't want to because they will sort of seat themselves on top of the embossing on here anyway so if you wanted to put them flat you could do but you know me I just I just like a little bit of depth on my cards so I'm popping that on top of the happy birthday on the main folder so that that stands out and then I'm layering up my sunflowers So you're hiding some of the stalk, but not too much. Okay, and then pop that down there. So you see your leaves have now got some support and they're not going to get caught on anything and, and get ripped off. I shall add some more colour to the rest of the flower. Um, a little bit later before I post it but I will I will put a picture on with the when I upload the video okay so as a quick way of adding colour to your die cuts without you worrying about um, no problem Christine without you worrying about using pens or pencils or whatever or watercolour paints you know if you're not if you're not sort of confident with colouring this is a quick way to add colour um, but still give you a stunning card now I prefer this one to this one I prefer the colors Um I, I don't know why just this says more autumn this says more spring even though they're sunflowers and sunflowers aren't a spring flower as such Um but to me that sort of gives you options on you don't have to make them sunflowers either when you think about it you can make many sort of flowers and they are sunflowers obviously but just add different colors make them look completely different you know it's it's just one of those things that you're only limited by your own imagination at the end of the day so you know just just have a think and use this technique for those embossing folders that haven't got their own stencils i know there are some coming and that's going to be a godsend but you know while you're waiting there are still ways of doing um, colouring without using pens and, and pencils or whatever so that's today's card thanks very much for joining me today I hope you enjoyed it um, and I'll see you on Thursday have a fabulous week everybody bye for now mm -hmm.